tell you what God hates the most. I mean, read it tonight. God hates idols. Okay, you're going to see why in this verse, in this statement. You see, <laughs> anyone who you ascribe anything on earth to, and they receive it, allow it, and accept it, they are competing with God. They're in danger immediately. Hope you hear me. Hope you hear me. If someone says, you sing well, you better be careful how you respond. I mean, think from this night, because you put yourself in danger. Let me tell you, you see Nebuchadnezzar, you study Nebuchadnezzar's problem. God made Nebuchadnezzar king. God told him, bless your kingdom. But Nebi began, you know Nebi? Nebi began to think it was him. You know, God was fine with him until he started thinking, I am God. Now God says, now you see, I was being so nice with you. Let me tell you something. Follow me carefully. Please listen to me. It's okay for people to praise you. But don't receive it. Don't accept it. Keep passing it on. That is called worship. You are ascribing your success to someone else. If you study Jesus, who was the most perfect human that ever lived on earth, what made him so distinctive, Pastor, was this, these statements. I can only do what I see my father do. I only speak the words I hear my father say. I only can do the works that my father does. He kept on transferring the credit to God. And that protected him and kept him in power. The power flow is tied to credit transfer. The danger of success is you receiving the credit and allowing others to give it to you and accepting it as if you deserve it. You are now in trouble with God because now the people are worshiping you. Now, don't get me wrong. You should, Jesus praised a lot of people. He praised the centurion. I've never seen such great, I mean, he praised, you know, the rich young ruler. He says, oh, the Bible says, oh, how he loved him. I mean, he praised a lot of people. But you keep transferring it. You know what made David successful with Goliath? These words. You come to me with a sword and a shield and a spear. But I come to you not in my expertise with a sling. See, you could be a good singer, an expert on the piano, an expert with choirs, but you better be careful when you start talking. I don't come to you with a sling. He never said I come to you with a sling, you know. He said, you come to me with your spear and your shield and your sword. I come to you, this normally say, with my sling and I'm good at it. You get yourself in trouble with God. He said, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of Israel. God says, no, that's what I want to hear, son. I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to fix this sling good. Write this down, please. Worship is only possible through the knowledge of the one being worshipped. You cannot 
worship beyond what you know about the person. Your worship is limited to your knowledge of the person. I believe that's why we end up worshiping things. Because we know our talent real good. But we don't know the God who gave it to us real good. So we worship what we know. You cannot worship what you don't know. So whatever you know, you worship. Selah. Let me go back to a point I made last night. Here's the point. The reason why God keeps making you go through experiences is so that you could have material to worship Him with. I feel lonely up here. I feel lonely. God will not bring you out of the fire because He wants you to know He's a fire surviving God. So that when you come out of the fire, you got something to say that's new about him again. That's worship. You ascribe to him, my God is inflammable. How did you know that? I've been through the fire. See, he allows you to go through the difficulty to introduce himself to you in a new way again. And every area he takes you to, it's a new introduction of God. So now, you see, if you ain't had no experience with God, you, would you, you can't worship him. People say, you don't know what I've been through, so you don't know why I'm singing or dancing. That's, that's important. When God began to talk to the children of Israel, he always brought up their past. Did you read it? Every time he'd rebuke them, he'd say, don't you remember what I did? I bought you out of Egypt. I provided food for you. I fed you in the desert. I gave you clothes. I gave you water out of the war rock. I gave you food from the heaven. He said, in other words, he began to say, look, you got enough material to keep ascribing the credit to me. Lord, have mercy. There's a scripture in the Bible that you should not even be singing. The scripture goes like this. Sing to the Lord a new song. That is not a song. That is a command. The way you got what they call the song for the Lord is from experience. So if you had no experience with God, you couldn't sing to the Lord a new song. So he kept singing old songs. So you can tell where people are at by the songs they're singing. I feel lonely. So if you're singing 16th century songs, which are great songs, don't get me wrong, but if that's all the songs you're singing, that's the only experience you had. Hallelujah. And some of you ain't got no song lately. That's what David was saying. David says, sing the Lord a new song. Go get some new experiences. Go through some more hell. Now that's an interesting request. Lord, I need some new songs. God said, okay, let's go. And he takes you through the valley, through the flood, through the blood, through the mass. He says, now, what do you think about that? He said, Lord, I got a new song. Yeah. Some through the water, some through the flood. So you ain't never been through a flood, so you're singing someone else's song. Everybody say, sing your own song. Tell your neighbor, find your own song. Tell your neighbor, you have your own song. That's why you're supposed to sing in the Holy Spirit, you know. You're supposed to sing to him based on what you just came out of. You don't need no worship leaders to get no meeting started. Oh, I don't want to get into that too quick. Worship is only possible based on the knowledge of the one you're worshiping. You cannot call great God if he had never shown his greatness to you. So it's not worship, it's called repetition. You know, people 
don't know what I've been through. They don't know me. And people talk about me, criticize me. They don't know me. I didn't appear in a day. When I wrote the song, Brand New World, I was experiencing some things. And everybody sings the song now. But that, that ain't that song. It's my song. And I didn't write that to have a nice song. I was in a development phase of my life where I began to realize that the world ain't got no help except Jesus. So I wrote that experience down. And people sing it. It's my song. We sing David's song, you know, we ain't never killed no lad, no giant. <laughs> you remember how Moses got his first song? Read it in the book of Exodus. His first song was written when, they, when the water came together, splash behind them. And Moses looked. It says, Moses began to sing, and his sister picked up a tambourine, and Moses did not, you know, he didn't say, I can sing a hit, I can write a hit. Moses wrote what he just experienced. He says, the Lord my God is my strength and my song, for he has dashed the enemy, he has drowned Pharaoh and his army, and it was a song of an experience. What are you singing about lately? The reason why God would allow your mortgage payment to go right to the end, I mean right to the end, because he wants you to sing about him as the mortgage payer. See, if you keep finding your own way of paying it, you ain't got no song. You know, in this ministry, we go through our phases of tribulation and trials as far as believing God for what we're doing in the vision. And I am aware, and you see, my problem is I don't panic because I'm aware of what God is like. And because you're having a tough time doesn't mean God ain't with you. Don't misunderstand this. God, <laughs> God allows you to go in the lion's den. Why? He wants a lion song. He wants you to see him as the owner of lions. Can I hear an amen? No one before Daniel had ever, ever heard of a man sleeping in a den with hungry lions. Which means there must have been a power in the den that was greater than the lions that the lions respected. Daniel came out knowing something about God that no one else ever knew. He's a lion taming God. Lift your hand, thank God he's gonna tame your lions. Whatever you are sleeping with, he's gonna tame. Thank him. See, you can worship now. Just find your lions, the one that, that they say gonna kill you. Now you can sing about it, see? You have to become your own song. You ever been close to death? That's a lion's death. I remember when my car turned over when I was going home one night. I mean, the car spinned over three times. Landed upside down. I walked out, dusted off. I wrote a song. <laughs> when I wrote a song. This is why God keeps reintroducing himself to you in new ways. He's giving you material to ascribe to him. Let's define worship in practical terms. Write this down. Worship is only reserved for the Lord. Say that with me. Worship is only reserved for the Lord. You know, my sister, listen to me. This is heavy. Write that down, everybody, please. That is the key to worship. He is Lord. The word Lord means owner, but it means legitimate owner, the one who legally owns it. That's the word Lord. You see, those of you who rent from somebody, the one you're renting from is called what? The land lord. See, the word lord means owner. Very important word. When you see that word in the Bible, it means mighty controller. <laughs> Why? He's mighty because he owns, and because he owns, he controls. That's why we call him Lord 
almighty he owns everything so he can control everything it's important write this down worship is the acknowledgement and the ascribing of all things to the source the Lord owns everything why because he is the legitimate source of everything why because he created everything write this down worship is a result of revelation of the source of creation oh God have mercy help me I feel lonely again listen please read that statement five times because until you get this worship is a struggle worship is a result everybody say result true worship doesn't have to be generated <laughs> true worship is a result of something it's a result of a revelation that you have about who is the source of everything created when that gets to you when you understand it then his praise is continually upon your lips oh help me Lord have you praised God put a lipstick on your lip you don't that lipstick came from bone ground up bone from an animal that God made and they mixed it with coloring <laughs> gotcha which means the lip and the lipstick belong to the owner if you don't find God for the lipstick then you are not ascribing to him ownership of that lipstick Therefore, you are lacking gratitude. Yes. So everybody, service begins. Let's stand. Now let's sing. Come on, y'all sing louder. Y'all sing. Y'all ain't singing. You see, the problem is they don't like God. They don't have an awareness. There's no revelation that the, the knee that they're standing on and the cartilage between the bone and the knee and the fact that the muscle is holding the cartilage and the knee up belongs to him how dare you not stand uh, i'm tired i ain't standing See, you don't understand he'll knock your knee out from under you if you fool around see when you get a revelation of what the source of everything when you get a revelation of it there's this consciousness of constant thank you thank you thank you thank you I can walk wow thank you I'm walking thank you my knees are working thank you wow my lips are working my tongue is talking thank you my eyes oh I can see you thank you I can hear what I'm saying thank you see you never it's praise continually when you understand where it all comes from you don't need no cheerleaders called worship leaders but your problem is you don't worship God you worship the worship leaders and they worship their song that makes you sing and God says I'm not in this <laughs> <laughs> 